Hello to Aaron Today viewers. On behalf of the Market 360 Advisors here at Stuart Peterson, I'm Bob Devonport and this is your Dairy Week in Review for July 11th, 2014. So to start out here, let's take a look at how our CME dairy components settled at the conclusion of this week's trade. Uh, it was a pretty decent week overall, despite some early losses uh, early on in this week's sessions. And far as cash cheese goes, blocks settled at 197 even, up just a quarter cent on the week. Barrels settled at 198 and three quarters, up a quarter cent as well. Cash butter settled at 237 and a quarter, down just one and three quarter cents. August waste settled at 67 even, up 1.8 cents and August non-fat dry milk settled at 178 even up 1.8 cents as well. Shifting over to our Class 3 settlement prices this week, August finished the week at 2070, up 12 cents, and is holding up really nicely here. As far as the deferred months go, they took a little bit more of a beating this week with the September contract settling at 1985, down 47 cents. That puts our 2014 average price now at 2135, down 14 cents this week. So let's take a look at how spot cheddar trade fared this week. Uh, here we have a weekly chart of the block barrel average. Now, as you can see here, we have sold off a little bit here from where we were at at our high just a couple of weeks ago. But overall, cash cheese has been holding up pretty nicely. Um, we've been really maintaining near that $2 a pound level. We did get down to closer to $194 even here this week, which is that low from about eight weeks ago here. Uh, but we did post a little bit of a reversal uh, later on in this week's session and we finished well off that low posting actually a weekly gain of a just a quarter cent um, we finished at 195 and a half this week so we're down about five cents from that two dollar mark but again we did finish uh, quite a ways off of the low here so that's a good sign going forward if we can continue to build on that strength in the future now the good thing is there is still good buying interest in cash cheese they're kind of sitting back on the sidelines though really waiting for the sellers to come to them and offer car loads a little bit lower, but once they start offering a penny or two lower, the buyers really are stepping in pretty aggressively, actually, and we're seeing a lot of volume uh, move between uh, both blocks and barrels. So let's take a look at our second month milk chart. So now we are uh, have our August contract as that second month contract. And this is a daily chart of August milk now. And as you can see here, we have pulled back a little bit from our high that we were at a few weeks ago here. But overall, the price action is holding up really nicely as compared to our more deferred months in class three, which have sold off really as far as the September to December contracts go. They've sold off anywhere from about $1.30 to over $2 dollars a hundred weight in September's case uh, from our recent highs to our recent lows there so those months have taken a lot more of a beating here recently while August has uh, been holding up really nicely and I think a lot of the support that August is uh, finding here just comes from the fact that spot cheese is continuing to hold up selling off only about five cents that's not a whole lot of damage to send August uh, really screaming lower at this point so over this week the August contract really was the only contract that posted a weekly gain of 12 cents here and you can see that that we actually finished out the week pretty nicely. We posted some gains over the course of Thursday and Friday to finish with a net gain on the week there. So again, I think a lot of the support is gonna continue um, coming from cash cheese. And if we can continue to remain firm there, that should continue to offer some support to class three. And it may be even be enough to uh, cause a little bit of a bounce back in those deferred months as well. So get into some fundamentals here. Our weekly cheese stocks really continue to build pretty nicely here. You can see that um, from where we were at at the April low here, we've really been in this solid upward trending pattern. And um, how we're currently uh, positioned now as far as stocks go, um, we have rebuilt 10.9% from this April low now. And that's a, a pretty solid increase in inventories. But when you compare that to where we were at back in 2013, which is this yellow line here, you can see that there's still a very wide gap there. So inventories are starting to rebuild, but we are still down 22% on a year over year basis. Now getting into exports, exports do remain fairly strong overall. We didn't see a huge year over year increase in May exports, but remember May of 2013 exports were a record high, so it's going to be tough to see those really massive year over year increases like we have been seeing in the past. So even if we're just up a little bit or even unchanged on a year over year basis, that still means we're at really near historically high levels as far as dairy export goes. Now butter exports though in the month of May did pull back quite a bit here and that 
may have been just due to the fact that Cash butter prices have really been at quite a premium over global prices, so we may have seen a little bit of a fall off in export demand there. So as far as uh, butter exports go here, you can see that over the past couple of months, we've seen quite a, a big pullback there. and We were down 37% in May from April. That's just that month over month decline. And on a year over year basis, butter exports were down 8% from May of 2013. Now, the exact opposite, though, as far as powder export goes, we've seen a really nice rebound in powder exports from uh, off a low here about three months ago. So powder exports actually came in at a record high in the month of May, and we we're up 14% from April here and up 8% from May of 2013. So again, a record high amount of powder exports in the month of May. And actually the majority of that was due really just to, to one main uh, country and that was Mexico, it was really our biggest customer in the month of May who made up for almost half of our total exports in that month. So um, we'll see if uh, they can keep up that business going forward. That should really help to support really class four prices if we can continue to see those really strong powder exports again. So looking at the week ahead, not much as far as fundamental reports go, but we did get our uh, July USDA supply and demand report out um, earlier today. And that showed that um, the USDA held steady both corn and soybean yields, but they did increase ending stocks, which really uh, led to some sharply lower trade here following that report today. Now December corn settled the week here at 384 and a half, so really uh, at a healthy level below that $4 threshold now. And August soybean meal continues to sell off and settled at 387.80 here today so we're down well over $100 just from our most recent high of 509 about a month ago so definitely seen some uh, some welcomed relief on the protein side there for dairy producers well, that's going to do it for us here today on behalf of the market 360 advisors here at Stuart Peterson thank you for watching and have a great weekend